diplomatic collaboration between Nigeria and the United States has resulted in the repatriation of about $23 million of uh, the so-called Abacha loot. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss this further on the program this morning. Also on the breakfast, the Naira gained slightly at the spot market and Friday, but depreciated steadily in the unofficial market within the week. What does this mean for the economy? And don't forget, we'll also look at uh, today's national newspapers, uh, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a brand new week and, uh, of course, interesting discussions all through this week, starting today, reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning. My name is Messi Boko. It feels great to be back on your screen this morning, and thanks for joining us. Absolutely, Messi. <laughs> looking stunning as always. Thank I don't you. know what the secret is. You refuse to tell me, but anyway. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how was your weekend? Very well. All right. You look well rested. <laughs> of course. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, we have we have as usual a, a trending top trending segment today, looking at some of the bigger uh, uh, conversations happening on social media, which we usually will bring up um, online. Um, <laughs> happens to be a lesson, uh, you know, for our young people out there, and not be everybody where you see where get money you go follow is what people are saying on well, social who, who media. Who actually made? I mean, that sounds like a parable. No, no, you know, you know, like they say, Nigeria have 150 million, I think now it's 200 million coaches when it comes to football. You know, anytime the Super Eagles don't play well, it's everybody's giving the opinion. The coach should have done this, the coach should have done that. Well, when people also, you know, go wrong uh, morally, um, you have a lot of people going on social media, also giving their views as well. And um, the ordeal of, uh, or the exposure of a certain young man uh, over his activities or acts, you know, as far as uh, kidnapping is concerned, is giving people also an opportunity to advise a lot of young people who are out there uh, saying not all that glitters is gold. Um, if, you know, if you don't see people crying in church and all that, um, don't be carried away. They just could be kidnappers. Well... A so-called big boy, by else a big boy, like we say in this part of the world, you know, if you are flashy, flamboyant, you have money, you're a big boy, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, he is a, a, a big boy from Bielsa State. Um, he has broken down in tears while pleading for forgiveness uh, after he was arrested over alleged kidnapping. Now, repeat this, is alleged kidnapping. He captured himself in a video before his arrest, you know, flaunting dollar bills online as they shared words of motivation. He's a motivational, you saw these guys, even Hush Puppy was a motivational <laughs> speaker. Yeah, Hush, <laughs> Hush Puppy was a motivational speaker too as well. So, you know, these things don't move me. And I think what uh, some people online say, don't be moved by these things. You can see him on your screen there. This is not to shame anyone, but this is the story that uh, he captured himself in a video before his arrest, flaunting dollar bills online as he shared words of motivation, telling people uh, to work hard. But his recent arrest, it seems, uh, Messi, uh, he has exposed his sort of a double lifestyle that is living. Uh, now, a victim of kidnapping activities of this young man, um, you know, could be heard accusing him of abducting him in a video. But he denied that he was, he was a part of it, you know, and uh, he was a part of the accuser's abduction. Um, so the video of the gentleman kneeling down after being uh, uh, arrested by the police, all right, over this alleged kidnapping in Abuja is all over social media. You can see him on the screen there. Um, and his name is Lion. You know, Lion sounds familiar, L-Y-O-N, because the former... Uh, governor, uh, Orbit's short term uh, of Bielsa State is also known as Lion. He is a big boy, this particular guy. Um, he's been all over social media, has an Instagram page um, where he, he you know, gives the motivational speeches. But also, the pictures of him showing him praying, crying in church, you know, in worship, uh, have given people a lot to talk about, about, you know, uh, the, the deceptive lifestyle you know, of sorts, and uh, telling young people out there, don't be carried away. There's another video I saw of him, you know, singing and enjoying himself in a car, very nice, luxurious car, with a young girl at the back 
seat also dancing with him you know while sitting down and someone says no nothing where our girls don't go follow <laughs> you know you know and then someone says women they don't care if the, where the mother is coming from if you like use their mother's mon their mothers uh, for ritual they won't care you know, and the ladies are now responding saying hey 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 uh i'm sorry uh, how do we tell legal money from mother's blood money you know <laughs> So these are some things we have, um, and uh, you some people are saying, you know what, if you see someone in a club, nightclub, for instance, spraying, uh, spending up to 100K a night, um, or, or spending money on a lady he's not really in a serious relationship with, you have to question where that money is coming from. So, I mean, in all of this, uh, for instance, at what point do I ever start off from? Let's even start off with the fact that he's been tagged as a socialite. And it's one thing that I beg to agree, because it feels like we get to throw the word around, uh, socialite, especially with every other person. So if, if, if you find me in, in the club now that I spend a lot of money, I'm living, you know, flamboyant lifestyle, then it automatically means I'm a socialite. But however, a socialite is a person from a wealthy and possibly from an aristocratic background uh, who is very prominent in the society. And of course, you see them attending all of this event. And the question would be, is he really a socialite? Because he goes to the club and then he is spending so much buying drinks. And we can see uh, pictures of him on the internet, especially on his Instagram accounts, most possibly living uh, it feels like he's living, you know, an exotic life, traveling to those very luxurious places and what have you, and that's it. But big on society for that particular one, because over time, uh, there's, there's been a lot of classification. I mean, we need to begin to do a lot of evaluation and asking of questions about where our values are. This days is almost impossible. Just like I've said that you, when you say someone is a socialite, then you would say that this person is from a very wealthy background or is an aristocrat. But however, if you look at this, it's a kidnapper. He's confessed to this. We're hoping that uh, the courts would actually put one and two together, of course, because I mean, everyone uh, at the end of the day still needs to be tried. And so uh, the law would have to live up to her expectation. But as a society that we live in, a society that uh, where the systems, you know, the systems are not functional, where those who are actually working uh, legally, those who are actually putting their hands to work and are respecting the law of nature are not getting so much for that which they're putting. But that's not even an excuse for, you know, involving in kidnapping and what have you and living all of this lifestyle. I think we also live in that society where people don't question the source of our wealth any longer. It's okay. So you see someone, you can't really tell. You see someone who's displaying a lot of affluence and what have you, spending money. We don't have a system that queries how we get our wealth and all of that. And so people are already being carried away. And for those who are actually in a legal way of earning or means, I mean, making livelihood or uh, uh, you call it, because another thing that has been bastardized again is the word called, um, you know, hustle. And so hustle yeah. has become another word. <laughs> hustle doesn't necessarily mean hard work, but we have incorporated it to mean, oh, we're working hard. It's something different entirely. Yes. Yeah, let's quickly listen to that video because I think the sound bites will give a bit of insight into uh, this whole story. Okay, so... Oh. All right. Um, uh, okay, it seems the track isn't ready, uh, so we'll, we'll move on from that. Mm. Uh, but in that video, he can be heard uh, pleading for mercy, not you. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, He can be heard pleading for mercy, saying that he was involved in kidnapping operations only twice. Uh, you know, he also, was, he also begged, you know, to be released because uh, his wife had just, been put, had just uh, given birth. Okay, let's listen to this. So you want to tell us saying only two people you don't join and go kidnap? Yes, sir. sir. You're a liar. Sir, sir. Now this turn, I don't carry me. This face oh, I they see, I mean they lie down for no. two years like this. I don't see don't me. Can't come out here. I, don't, I see your face, you they lie down koro koro. I go go court. Go. You now you be the first person where I go point out for court. You they lie down koro koro for cheer. When they carry me, they butcher me to die. <laughs> Sir, I don't know anything concerning your matter. I don't know. Lie, lie to lie, lie. I see your face. I don't know anything concerning your matter, sir. Please, put a forgive me, Abel, sir. Sir, forgive me. My wife just bought a boy. I see you Look at, look at, look at. Why you say you did that, Juba? Break a leg. You would have forgiven. 
<laughs> Are you the only for forgiveness? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> you know the way he said me, and the accuser said lie, lie to lie, lie. He's not taking it. Hi, Messi. You know he, he he usually is on 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 social media, fronting words of cash. You know U.S. dollar bills, and you know he we had reported in one of his posts saying. You know, money is good. Hustle, 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 hustle. You know, it could be heard on one of his videos. You know, the pictures of him are, of him at different social gatherings, including one at Transcorp Hotel, Apuja. You know, but it's the one in church where he's crying that I've got people talking about. Hmm, don't follow everybody you see in church. Oh, that is a hospital. No, but not everybody there is is he is treated and successfully. You know. No, but we also need to understand. So I, I, I saw that reaction over the weekend and I was almost tempted to respond mm -hmm. in one of the posts. But of course, mm -hmm. I had to restrain myself from putting out <laughs> my opinion and comment. <sighs> you know what? Because if it's that of the church, we understand that the devil himself goes to church. And so <laughs> you can't take that out. Does the devil sit down in church to worship God? Oh, the, I don't know if it's a crying down, worship. Of course, the devil is That's in church. That's what I So, so Paul, you, Coffee, Coffee, you know that worship. we can't go. Coffee, you know we can't go into yeah. arguing the scripture. It's also in the Bible that you need to test all spirits. It's there. So, and so people will come in the form of godliness, but. Uh, you know, they deny the power thereof. And so you have people who are clothed, you know, in sheep clothing, but they are wolves. So these are scriptures. So let's not even go there. It's already in the Bible. Yeah. And so preach we, on, uh, preach on. <laughs> no, I can't start to <laughs> preach on. But I think that we live in a society where our values have actually, you know, deteriorated. I don't even think that we have values anymore for us as a people. You know why? Because we, we seem to be extolling and as long as the money is coming, nobody's asking. We want to get to a society where we're questioning people. You, you see, a, you know, you see some persons living a certain lifestyle. It's not out of envy, but we need to understand how they are getting these funds. Where, who, I mean, who's bankrolling you? Where's all of this money coming from that you're leaving? All of this. We know the kind of business that you are involved in and what have you. But let's even get back to the crux of the matter. The issue of kidnapping has been on the front burner, and we know that uh, the president over time had said that. Of course, it's not a federal offense and what have you. Um, there's a lot of persons that have agitated for capital offense for the issue of kidnappers and those who are involved in kidnapping. However, if you want to look at it, it feels like kidnapping has become uh, a very lucrative business, Kofi. And over time, you find people going into this venture or adventuring into this uh, you know, business, I would call it. And at the end of the day, how many persons have been apprehended? How much have we been strong on with the, with the issue of kidnapping? Let's even bring it back to you know, what the law talks about. It's important. There's been several arguments whether we should have new legislation to uh, kidnappers. I mean, let, let's have a new legislation. And so uh, maybe the new legislation will help with the kidnapping. But really, we do have laws already. First of all, the Constitution says it is, you know, the responsibility of a government to ensure that lives and properties are protected. And so we have the, uh, you know, Terrorism Act of 2011. That should be it. The issue of, you know, uh, taking one hostage, which actually means uh, 10 years has been prescribed for anyone who takes anyone hostage. I think we need to enact the laws that we have already to discourage all of that. So far, 15 states across the, uh, you know, the entire country or thereabout have been able to domesticate, uh, you know, or come out with uh, uh, all the laws, bills to ensure that kidnappers actually face a time, or probably capital offense, if you want to say. But that's the much we can talk about this. And if you can't do the crime, please, or you can't do the time, don't do the crime. But we're hoping that you know that the law would actually have its place in this one. Now, moving away from that, quite interesting. Uh, talking about managing a national carrier, uh, Ethiopian airline has been selected as strategic partner and shareholder of the Nigerian Air. And you need to know the Ethiopian airline is Africa's largest airline, uh, which will now own 49% of the Nigerian Air, and the federal government would own 5%. Of course, you have all the stakeholders, Nigerians who would own you know, the remaining 46% uh, if I'm not mistaken. So altogether, 5% plus uh, the government, uh, you know, Plus the government, 5%, the federal government owning 5% and stakeholders owning 46%, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it allows Nigeria to be a major stakeholder in the carrier. But that has also not really been very fantastic. I sat down well with a lot of people because it has generated different reactions. Kofi, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's, uh, 
it's, it's too early to call, you know. Uh, it's too early to call because um, the, the, the early days yet uh, hit the Ministry of Aviation. Uh, led a team to Ethiopia to, um, you know, Hadi Sirka, to, to, you know, specifically the Ethiopian aviation authorities. I, I felt that um, the Ethiopian aviation authorities should have been beaten the path to Nigeria, at least in the early stages of the, uh, the negotiations. Um, uh, but probably maybe they went to look at the facilities there, I don't know. Uh, because, I mean, if you want to bid for uh, the airline, you know, to, to operate the national carrier of one of the biggest countries in the world, uh, you should um, you should come, come and then do do the needful. But you know, but to see the minister going to Ethiopia for me, uh, maybe it wasn't a master stroke in diplomacy. But like I said, if they went there to look for uh, look at the uh, facilities and all that, then maybe it, it's cool. You know, Ethiopia is not a small nation. Ethiopia is Africa's second Africa's second uh, most populous nation. Um, uh, the the reaction of some Nigerians is of interest to me. Um, I mean, I saw some comment by Okonjo Oviala, who oh, spoke as former uh, Minister of Finance and Budget and National Planning, who criticized the um, the idea of federal government trying to uh, you know float a national carrier, saying she won against it before, and uh, that uh, it was a very bad idea, especially in these times when the nation is grappling with. Um, uh, economic issues, and you know, Ngozi Kunje well has, um, I mean, she's been there, she's done that, even though Omeyole Shore will say she was only a secretary at, uh, <laughs> at the World Bank and not an economist. But um, she, she's been there, um, so right now as the head of the World Trade Organization, if she speaks, people will listen. She has said before that, um, you know, it's a bad idea. So people have got back to those streets and have also put those things out to say, hey, uh, this is what this woman said. Is it a good idea for the uh, federal government to embark on this project at this time? I think um, time will tell. I don't have all the all the indices, all the um, uh, the information at this point, Mercy, to really tell. I'm not an economic expert, but looking at what most people are saying, they feel that um, you know it's not a bad idea to have a national carrier. Uh, it will spend Nigerians some of the expense that they have to pay to these foreign airlines you know, when they have to travel to other parts of the world. So that's, but, that's all the advantages there. Mm. Uh, you look at the fact that uh, scarce foreign exchange that is leaving the country in terms of uh, capital flight, you know, will be uh, retained in the country, you know, because the federal government goes through a lot. I remember listening to a video, watching a video uh, interview with uh, Oscar Oyema, who is uh, the CEO of Airpeace, who talked about, who actually made some revelations about what's going on in the aviation sector, um, saying that, you know, the, the whole lack of funds to, or non repatriation of funds, uh, uh, you know, that belong to these foreign airlines, is there's much to it that meets the eye. You know, some of these airlines are um, uh, also fleecing the country. Um, if, you, if, if, if you know, you know, some of these airlines charge more for people who are traveling from Johannesburg to London than for people who are traveling from Lagos to London, which is a shorter journey, you know. <laughs> and, and they don't, they're not even allowing but, uh, airlines, Nigerian airlines like Airpeace even to operate uh, that route, you know. So if Nigeria has a national carrier, the, the positive would be that, you know, because it's a state-owned thing, they may have that uh, leverage to be able to be allowed to fly some of these routes by giving Nigerians access to more affordable flights. Uh, the second positive I was about to say is that, um, you know, whereas, uh, uh, what do you call it again, um, Nigeria Airways was uh, run wholly and solely by government, and then we know the history of Nigeria Airways well documented how it failed woefully, and a lot of people have said because, uh, you know, government officials and their families were being given free trips to any part of the world, and it wasn't run like a business. This time, looking at the, um, the equity distribution, you can see that... Uh, there is a plan in place to allow it to be run by private uh, concern, which is Ethiopian Airways. Uh, so it, it, it might solve that issue of um, you know lack of uh, business savviness of government and some of the things that people complain that. Uh, but Kofi, um, uh, just the quickly, of, 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 of Nigeria Airways. Yeah, yeah uh, just quickly before we move on, I, I know that you know that uh, whether or not we should be involved in having uh, you know a national carrier has been an issue that's been raised. But uh, looking at the reactions and concern from some persons about the management and the shares, you know, the percentage of 
uh, shares that we own as a country, 5%, and of course 49% on the other hand, Ethiopian Air, and people who have actually, uh, people are quite worried that, hey, does it really mean that we really own this? But like I mentioned earlier on, the fact that you have Nigerian entities owning, you know, the remaining four to six, it brings us, it gives us, you know, at the end of the day that you have the Nigerian government in collaboration with other Nigerian entities. And so the issue of decision and uh, at the board and other critical, uh, you know, talks would actually not be a problem because at the end of the day, Nigerians still have, you know, a say. They owned a larger share uh, with all of this. But, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, but, but also, but what, also, what you want to talk yeah, about, yeah. no, I totally understand. Now, you also want to talk about collaboration. This is not the first time we're having collaboration. Uh, the issue of, uh, you know, Virgin, Virgin Atlantic has been raised, Virgin, uh, you know, the airlines, that partnership, and people are asking how far have we gone with all of that. But um, to query, you know, uh, having to have the Ethiopian airline. It, they've been described as the largest in Africa. Uh, and also to note that Ethiopian airline owns 45% of Zambia Airways, 49% uh, of Guinea Airways, and 100% of Ethiopian Mozambique Airlines, and 49% of Chad Airlines, and 49% of Malawi. And at the end of the day, you want to say that the Ethiopian airline is owned 100% by Ethiopian government. They have existed... Uh, you know, for a very long time, and they have proven they have track record. They are the best, you know, in Africa, largest in Africa, if you want to say. And so, uh, it wouldn't be wrong to have uh, that. On the other hand, but there are other factors that are necessary for this particular conversation that we're having right now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, uh, for me, it's there's it nothing else to say. Um, I mean, whether it's, it's totally government owned or not. You know, it's 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 more like more of a situation of you can't um, you can't you can't give what you don't have, you know. And and as it is, I mean, when the government put out uh, for the bid, yeah, you know, I, I started accepting bids rather. Um, there's only one one bid, you know. It was only Ethiopian Airways. There was no other bid from any other um, any other party. Yeah, so, I mean, even if the government didn't want to go with European Airways, the fact is that they put out or started accepting bids and there was only one party that bid it, well, that bid rather, which was Ethiopian uh, Airways. So, um, uh, if, should we have, should Nigeria have gone for some other, uh, you, know, you know, airline or partner, maybe look at the Emirates, look at the Qataris, you know, look at uh, those in Abu Dhabi, go to Europe. Um, the thing is, if you call for bids and only one, one, one party you know, is interested, there's not much you can do well, uh, with, with that. So, so um, let's see how it goes. Um, I mean, the, the conversation is still out there. You look at the lifetime of this administration and the fact that uh, it's always drawing to an end. Um, probably they don't want to leave without fulfilling the promise. Well, uh, we need to go now, and I wish we had more time to talk about this, but that's uh, the size of it on Off the Press. Thank you so much for being with us. We take a break, and when we return, it'll be time for us to look through the front pages of uh, national dailies. We call it uh, Off the Press, like I said. Open up on Katara. We'll join the conversation. Please stay with us.